Australia, home of the possum, cool surfer dudes, strange lingo, now worries mate, fair dinkum, lots of sunshine and the Bonza Barrier Reef. It's the biggest, most spectacular coral reef in the world, and what's more, every creature is linked to another. Just imagine one huge family tree dating back 18 million years. From the minuscule to the mammoth to the miraculous, they're all connected in Barney's Barrier Reef. A parcel. Hang on, how do they know I'm here? I'm on a deserted island in the middle of nowhere. Ah, oh, deserted island, middle of nowhere. Hey, Jan, look, I've got a parcel from me, Dad. Ooh. So excited. Families, eh? What would you do without them? Well, I'd have a much cheaper phone bill, that's for certain, but bless them, I couldn't live without them either. Cool, back scratchers, I'm using those later. Oh, grass skirt. I'll do my hula for you in a bit. <laughs> oh, teddy bear, that can go by the bed, nice. Picture of me, Dad, so I don't forget him. Ah, shirt. Good. Yes, I probably won't be wearing that. Well, maybe for a fancy dress party. You know what? Who apart from my dad would care enough to send me a parcel on Desert Island? Well, in our world, families are made up of lots of different people. You've got mums, dads, brothers, sisters, step-siblings. Yeah, and you know what? Families are just as important here on the reef, too. And there are lots of different types of families, but they're not always that nice to each other. I know, there's all kinds of family kerfuffles. You've got parents deserting their babies, you've got fierce sibling rivalry, you've got spoiled only children. But at the end of the day, they're all family. <laughs> oh, I love it. My dad rocks. <laughs> ah, it's Nemo. Or clownfish, as they're officially known. Hey, why don't sharks eat clownfish? I don't know. Because they taste funny. <laughs> Uh-huh. Clownfish. They're not really very funny, though, are they? No, not really. They're apparently called clownfish because of the way they bob around in a clownish fashion when they swim. Ah, oh, they look like they're playing hide-and-seek. Yeah, it may look like they're just clowning around, Jen, but they're actually hanging out with their buddies, the anemones. Clownfish coat themselves in the anemone's mucus. Oh, I wouldn't coat myself in anyone's mucus. But it's for a good reason. It allows them to hide out in the anemone's stinging tentacles without getting stung. The clownfish are very careful parents, and when it's time for them to have a family, they decide to lay their eggs near the anemone to give them a safe nursery to hatch in. God, these two look busy. Yep, that's Mum and Dad. They're cleaning up an area ready to lay eggs. Clean and house proud. I'm impressed. Ah, Mum and Dad are playing in some, um, balloon type things. Ah, uh, those are the eggs, Gem. Ah, oh, yeah, bright orange ones. Oh, I can see the family resemblance. And they're not playing, they're looking after them to help them hatch. Ah, you're right. They are good parents, aren't they? Well, you haven't seen anything yet. Now they're fanning the eggs, which helps remove all the waste. And that goes on for a long, long, long time. Oh, oh, sorry. And um, their dad is very protective. He checks that all the hundreds of eggs are OK. Hundreds of eggs? Whoa, they must be tired. Oh, yes. But all that hard work has paid off. And now they have babies. Look at those faces. Oh, they're so cute. They may be cool, clownfish, but there's no joking around when it comes to being good parents. The clownfish are truly great examples of ocean family dedication. Both mum and dad are great caring parents. So, who's the next happy family? Five pairs of legs, a super long antennae, a super hard exoskeleton and, ooh, super staring eyes. It can only be the crayfish, or mummy crayfish to be precise. Or as she's also known, the rock lobster. Well, she's rock hard, that's for certain. This is a real example of girl power, all right? The female carries her eggs around on her own for three weeks. Well, that's not that long, is it? Well, it is when you can have up to 250,000 eggs. 250,000? Where does she put them all? Under her skirt, of course, where she looks after them by fanning them and keeping them from predators. Wow, now that is a lot of eggs. I wonder if she has a favourite. Maybe number 2052? <laughs> One thing's for sure, you wouldn't want to mess with a rock lobster in a hurry. They can look a little scary. Ah, are these the babies? 
Yeah, this is their first stage of growing up. A tiny, flat, spider-like larva, completely transparent. They look like ghost babies. Or happy little aliens. Eventually, they lose their transparency and look like proper mini lobsters. But I think they're much cuter when they're see-through. What a caring mummy crayfish. She doesn't look like the motherly type, but you can't fault her dedication. The clownfish are deeply dedicated parents. They fan and fan and fan. And mummy crayfish does the same. The clownfish and crayfish are linked together because they both obsessively protect their eggs. Ah, oh, little baby fish. They're actually spiny chromus babies. They're a species of damselfish. I think they're cute. How come they don't get lost or blown away? Well, they've got mummy and daddy to keep an eye on them. Stay together, stop messing around. <laughs> it's good to know parents nag their kids in the ocean too. This species are unusual because the babies, officially known as the fry... Ah, oh, fry! That's where the fry small fry comes from. Well, there you go. Cool, eh? As I was saying, this family are unusual because the parents stay by their babies, or fry, the whole time. Usually, fishy parents abandon their babies once they've hatched. Oh, did I mention they feed off their parents' mucus? <laughs> Oh, not mucus again. Yep, damselfish produce mucus on their scales, and the babies feed off it. Oh, completely gross. Although I have seen some baby food that looks a bit similar. Crayfish Mummy looks after all her thousands of eggs, and the damselfish go one step further and look after their small fry. So the crayfish and damselfish are linked by total parental love. <laughs> Ciao, Bella. Kissy, kissy. Te amo. You are el nudibranque magnificente. Hold the phone. Nudie Branks kissing. Whatever next. Oh, Nudie Branks, contain yourselves, will you? Or just go and find a little corner to snog in, please. Apparently, they stay like this for days. Oh, wow, look at these two. They've got a little heart shaped sign between them. Those are their eggs. They're stuck together in that shape by mucus. What? Yep, it may look like they're just advertising their love for each other, but actually they're releasing their eggs, which are, uh, well, mm, snotted together. Yeah, it doesn't seem as romantic now. Especially when you hear this. They lay their eggs... Not in snot. Well, yes, in snot, and then leave them alone. What? I always said those nudie branks weren't to be trusted. Yep, and they're left to fend for themselves in a snot ring. Too much snogging and not enough caring, if you ask me. And way too much snot. <laughs> Our spiny chromis, or baby damselfish as they're more fondly known, feed on their parents' mucus, and the nudie branks wrap their babies in a ring of mucus. So, the damselfish and nudie branks are linked with mucus. Hey, look, they're play fighting. Either that or playing Twister. These are two epaulet sharks. They're also called the long tail carpet sharks. Aha, uh -huh. and is that because they have long tails and are flat like a carpet? Oh, I'm not sure if they play fighting now. They're not. They're mating. Are you sure? He's biting her fin. That's not very romantic. I know, but in the epaulet world, apparently it's quite acceptable. Oh. Oh, and here's the egg. And a baby epaulet. Ah, oh, hang on a minute. Sharks lay eggs? Well, not all sharks, but the epaulet sharks do. They lay them on the ocean floor and disguise them by covering their algae. I love it. An egg-laying shark. What happens next? They leave them. What? They lay and go? What about the babies? The pup yeah. is on its yeah. own, and I yeah. mean on its yeah. own. They have a one in three chance of surviving, and it's every pup for themselves. Whoa, it's a cute baby though. But is it supposed to have that big white ball attached? Someone should let him know. The baby shark, or pup as it's called, is still inside the egg case, but survives by eating the yolk of the egg until he hatches, while he's getting himself ready for the outside world. Oh, here he comes. I think he's definitely ready for the outside world. Go on, mate, push. And he's off. Yeah, no thanks to Mum and Dad who had a play fight and abandoned him. Yep, those nudie branks didn't put much love into looking after their babies either, did they? So, nudie branks and epaulet sharks are connected by parental indifference. In other words, their mums and dads are rubbish. Barrier Reef. Not just about underwater, there's lots of animals on land as well. Yeah. Like the seabirds. Meet the boobies. Are you serious? Yep. Silly name, silly face. They're known for, well, looking a bit stupid. Wow, that is a big baby. And so it should be. This baby has fought hard to be here. Even though Mum lays more than one egg, the strongest will usually push all the others out of the nest to ensure he gets all the food. Right, so not much brotherly love going on there. 
I know. It seems harsh, but maybe it's nature's way of making sure at least one chick always survives. And once they've done that, boy, are they demanding. Feed me. I want some more. I'm still hungry. Oh, yeah, they're greedy, all right. And by getting rid of their siblings, they've made sure they get all the attention. Not to be recommended in the real world, obviously. You need siblings to play football with and argue over the remote. I agree. Once the chick has hatched, mum stays by the nest and the male goes off hunting. As the chick gets stronger, mum helps out too. But one parent always babysits. Have they forgotten to dress? <laughs> so. They're so greedy. They're as large as their parents before they actually grow any feathers. So they may look grown up, but they're not. It takes a long time before boobies are allowed out on their own, as they need to learn how to fly and plunge dive. Hmm. And um, as you can see, it might take a while. Ah, oh, they actually fly quite gracefully. Not bad for a bird called Stupid. Ooh. So boobies are linked to our epaulette shark as they're both only children. Hey, you've got to love family. Let's catch up on our reef family connections. So, how did we get from the caring clownfish all the way to the boisterous boobies? Our first family tie was our loving parents, the clownfish. They juggle jobs between them to look after their babies extremely well. Just like the spiky crayfish, she may not look the motherly type, but she's very dedicated. What about the mucus-chomping spiny chromus damselfish? Mucus connects them to the nudibranch with their heart-shaped mucus-covered eggs. Ah, oh, they're all kissy-kissy when they meet, but then they abandon their heart-shaped eggs without a thought. Like the epaulette sharks, they hide the eggs well, but they leave their babies to hatch completely alone. Unlike our baby booby, an only child who gets lots of loving, tender care. Enter our distinguished officer, the mandarin fish. What are you talking about? Well, the mandarin fish is named so because of its bizarre colouring and headdress that make it look like a Chinese imperial officer. Oh, he's quite majestic, digging his colours, and what a fine headdress. Good morning, sir. Hello. Wow, that is some cool fin action. Thank you. Another distinguishing feature of our regal mandarin, the ability to move his fins like a sideways helicopter. He's quite a dude. Thank you. They're a bit like reef celebrities. They like to preen, strut their stuff, and have very fussy eating habits. Mm -hmm. Only the best nosh will do. Five star, or they turn their nose up. Fussy eating fish, outrageous outfits, and they obviously like being the centre of attention. They really are like celebrities. But they're not as lovely as they look. OK, tell me more. Well, these guys have no parental skills at all. The minute the eggs are released, their parents disappear in a flash. What? They don't look after their kids at all? They don't even bother hiring a nanny? Nope, not even a backward glance. They're like the glamorous showbiz couple of the reef who basically just want to party and show off their fancy outfits. Well, I never. Boobies and mandarin fish both lay eggs, but boobies care for theirs while mandarin fish leave without a backwards glance. <laughs> Spooky things happen around the full moon, and this is one of them. Wow, what's all those little balls? It's like an ocean snowstorm. This is one of the most amazing sights in the ocean. It's called coral spawning. It happens only once a year. No one actually knows why, but it's mainly dependent on the full moon. It's very pretty. What is it? Well, it's basically the coral laying eggs into the water for the eggs to be fertilised by other corals. It's quite spooky, really. Loads of the corals in the reef all spawn together. On that particular day, most corals decide to all lay eggs within a few hours of each other, and some even at exactly the same time. Oh, and so that's why the reef keeps on living, because the moon, sun, tides and corals somehow let each other know that it's spawning time. Yep. Coral have an incredible ability to conquer, settle and outgrow, and spawning is a large part of that process. Once the eggs are released, that's it. They're on their own to grow roots and start their own coral family. Now that is one big family. I know. Talk about teamwork. Shame they leave their babies to fend for themselves, though. So the mandarin fish and corals are linked together because they both leave their babies to fend for themselves. So freedom at birth connects the mandarin fish and coral. <laughs> The box jellyfish. Deadly, highly venomous killers. Aw, oh, but surely the babies aren't deadly. They look like mini jellies. Don't be fooled, Gem. They may be babies, but they're still pretty tough. And where they come from is as mysterious as their reputation. The adults appear out of nowhere just after a full moon, nearly invisible with their venom-loaded tentacles. 
A few days later, they mysteriously disappear, but they have left something behind. Deadly microscopic spawn. Deadly microscopic spawn, as if. Well, they are once they start feeding on the plankton. I wouldn't mess with them. They have to survive completely on their own. Well, I guess if you're going to grow up to be a deadly killer, you have to be tough right from the outset. Our baby box jellies are connected to corals because their children are left to fend for themselves. OK, let's not get sidetracked. Who else is linked to the crafty corals? <laughs> hey, look, it's the big yellow mouth spotty leopard skin fish. No, it's not. It's the trigger fish. Yeah, no, but it's such a dull name for a fish with so many styles. Well, they're not dull parents, that's for sure. They're always on the go, these trigger fish. They're picking up rubble, blowing away dust, all in preparation for making a nest. And when they've made a nest, they really take care of it. They're a bit like the school cleaners of the sea world. Yeah. And once the eggs are laid, the male fertilises them and the female fans and defends them from predators. She's like a proper mummy. And the male fish? Well, they have it made. There's usually one male for several females. Oh, it's OK for some. Does he have any time to do any parenting? Well, considering he has to share himself between them all, he also works pretty hard. He guards the nest territory, protecting the mum and the babies until they hatch, and then the female takes over. It's a pretty equal workload, I'd say. They're very busy bee parents, Mr and Mrs Triggerfish, and they work together to look after their kids, just like their cooperative corals. <laughs> Reef cuttlefish. They may look comical, but these guys are super intelligent. Uh, if y equals 2 times 4 plus b, we can easily conclude that by carrying the 1, y equals the second last letter of the alphabet. Uh, really? Appearances can be deceptive, I suppose. Well, listen to this for a fascinating fact. 95% of all the animals in the world don't have a spine. They're called invertebrates, and cuttlefish are considered the most intelligent of them all. Fascinating, my dear Barney, but the question for today is, are cuttlefish good parents? Why, they are the best, dear Gemma. Uh, why are we talking like we're in a costume drama? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe it's a cuttlefish's rather fetching skirt. Check them out. These two are flirting. Hello. See how the skirt is twirling and the colour changing? That is the cuttlefish's way of saying, hey, I fancy you. But they look identical. Why are they copying each other? Is that part of flirting too? Uh, well, kind of. Get this. Some male cuttlefish compete for the affections of the girls by pretending to be girls. What? Yep, this allows them to get past the watchful eyes of the big protective males. Sneaky or what? Yeah, very sneaky. But you said it still makes them good parents. Well, they're the best parents. Cue sad story. When ready, the female lays her eggs very carefully in the coral, picking the perfect place. She lays up to 200 eggs, but not all the eggs survive. So far, not that sad. Brace yourself. Shortly after the egg laying, the male cuttlefish dies. No. So mum is left on her own to cope for a while, but then the mum dies too. Oh, that's so sad. Why? They've used up all their energy and so, so they die. Oh. I know, but it's just the way of the ocean world. They're there. The babies don't know any different and have no problem looking after themselves. They learn to be very independent very quickly and instinctively know what to eat and how to disguise themselves. Oh, good. I couldn't cope with any more sadness. The triggerfish and cuttlefish are both great parents and will do whatever it takes to bring their babies safely into the world. So they are linked because they both have lots of parental care. We've seen loads of underwater families. Let's run through them again. We started back at the colourful mandarin fish. They're proud, well-dressed, arrogant and rubbish parents. The mandarin fish abandoned their eggs without a backward glance. Like corals, millions of eggs released all on their own. Just like the box jellyfish babies, although I don't feel as sorry for them. They are highly venomous. The triggerfish are busy and probably very nagging parents, but look after their babies with great care. Just like the cuttlefish, who die for their children. Oh, so sad. So, who's our next family type? <laughs> oh, wow, look, a turtle piggyback. How cool would that be? Um, actually, they're mating. Oh, really? That male turtle's got his work cut out, hasn't he? Well, no, the one doing the carrying is the female. No way. Yep, a female turtle's job is a hard one, all right. When it comes to families, they do all the work, while the male does basically nothing. Yep, the women make all the effort, and carrying round my lordship male here is only the beginning. 
they travel up to 3,000 kilometers to breed. They then have to drag themselves up the beach using only their front flippers. Well, when you put it like that. No wonder they're tired. But does she get to rest? No way. She then has to dig a hole. Do you mean this sand flinging? Uh, does she know what she's doing? Looks to me like she's just chucking it everywhere. Well, when she's working on her own, what do you expect? I was only asking. It might look like she's just randomly flinging sand everywhere, but she'll get it done. Dare I ask, where's Dad? Uh, well, once he got his free lift, he was nowhere to be seen. Goodbye. Well, I see your point, but she's nearly done now, isn't she? No. Now she lays the eggs into this chamber she's made at the bottom of the sandpit. All 120 of them. Wow, that's a lot, I agree. I must admit, I have a whole new respect for the female turtle. So you should. There are loads of turtles nesting on this beach, around 20,000 to be precise. That's 20,000 turtles in an island the size of about 32 football pitches. Yep, about 625 turtles per football pitch, all trying to find space for their babies. It's hard work. Well, please tell me she gets to rest now. Yes, she has to drag herself down to the sea and only then does she get to rest. That is, if she doesn't meet a hungry tiger shark. I'm going to get you. <laughs> she does all the hard work and the bloke turtle does nothing. Oh, get me a drink, will you, Jim? Typical. See what I mean? Like the mummy cuttlefish, the turtle mums are also left to look after their babies on their own. So being a single mum is what links the cuttlefish and turtles. Cool. What's next? Ouch! Ouch! Ouch. Get off me! What are you doing? I'm trying to get out the way. Move out! I've been here for ten weeks. Move over where you Who's that? Oh, that's Michelle. Oh, that's my show. <laughs> now, you know we thought the turtle beach was crowded? It's baby turtle time. Whoa, it looks like the school bus rush. It may look chaotic, but the baby turtles all hatch together for a reason. I hope it's a good one. Looks painful to me. It's safety in numbers. They're very vulnerable to predators, so they need to stick together. They head straight for the water, despite the fact they've never been swimming before, and just follow the currents. Swim, turtles, swim. Look at them go. Sadly, not all of them make it, but they learn pretty fast, and once they've hit the water, they're not seen again for maybe 30 or 40 years until they nest. Bye, baby turtles. See you again in 2038, or thereabouts. <laughs> Although the competition is fierce, it's safety in numbers for the baby turtles, just like their mothers. Baby turtles and mother turtles stick together, so our link is safety in numbers. So, who's next, then? <laughs> Wait until you hear this. This is extreme. Oh, why do I have the feeling I'm going to hear something gross? The grey nurse shark with their shaggy teeth look ferocious, but they're actually pretty friendly. G'day, how you going? Unlike their babies. Brace yourself. So nurse shark eggs hatch inside the mother shark. So, I'm not shocked yet. When they're born, they're only small, but certainly not shy. These tiny baby sharks then do the unimaginable. They start to eat each other. Whoa, hang on. So they eat their own brothers and sisters? They must be hungry. Nope, it's not about their hunger. This is an example of sibling rivalry to the extreme. Again, it's all about them competing for space in their mum's belly, because they're a metre long when they're actually born. A metre? That's a mahusive bambino. How big are the sharks? Well, that's the thing. Their mum is just over two metres herself, so it's like giving birth to something half her size. And they fight to the death because they're basically securing their place in their mummy's tummy. It's survival of the fittest, and out of about 80 eggs, only two actually make it. Respect to the sharks. Those are some big babies. So both the baby turtle and grey nurse always start life with siblings, even if the baby nurse sharks turn on their brothers and sisters. So, siblings link our baby turtles and grey nurse pups. But who else is connected to our cute baby turtles? From single mummy to single daddy. Hey, run that past me again. Meet the magnificent seahorse, legend of the sea, a mystical creature that magnificent myths are made of. They've been around for 40 million years, and, um, well, their daddy is a mummy. Huh? 
Now, this I don't understand. Seahorses are the only animal in the world where it's the male that gets pregnant and has babies. Ah, now this is a lot more like it. It's about time the men around here did some work. And might I say, they do it quite uncomplainingly. Haha, <laughs> as if. Papa Seahorse have a brood pouch on the front. The female puts their eggs in the pouch and then the male is pregnant for about three weeks. See, that's not very long. Well, it is for something the size of a small hand. But then they go into labour and wait for it. 72 hours. That's three days. Three days. OK, I admit that's quite a while and it does look like hard work. And not only that, they give birth to as many as a thousand babies at a time. See, sometimes the men in the reef have to work really hard too. OK, OK, I admit they do. So, the male seahorse works hard, but what happens afterwards? I bet they rest forever or leave the female to do everything else. Oh, such little faith. Seahorses are completely and utterly romantic. During mating, they utter musical sounds. They are completely faithful to each other, and once they meet, they are inseparable. Ah, they sound like they'd make the perfect boyfriend. Yeah, but not great parents. There's not much parenting after the dad gives birth. Yeah, see? The dad might work hard during the birth, but then he deserts the little babies. Well, I'm not sure I blame him. A thousand babies is a lot of childcare. Imagine making packed lunches for all those every day. <laughs> Turtles and seahorses are both single parents. And Daddy Daycare links us right back to our clownfish, as the clownfish daddy is also in charge of looking after the eggs. You can't choose your family, and in the Barrier Reef you can sink or swim, depending on your family background. There's bad parents, obsessive parents, and really, really strange parents. Let's refresh with a reef cap. What a cool collection of connections. Let's see those again. The clownfish don't joke around when it comes to family, protecting their eggs at all cost. Like the caring crayfish, holding 250,000 eggs under her skirt can't be easy, but she'll do anything for her kitties. What about the baby spiny chromis? They eat their parents' mucus, yuck, which links them to the nudibranchs who lay their eggs in mucus rings. Egg abandonment links the snotty nudies to the epaulet shark. Their kids learn independence the hard way. Unlike the baby boobies, who in my opinion get completely spoilt. The celebrity mandarins leave their eggs behind them without a glance, like the corals who spawn millions of eggs all through the night. Box jellies are left mysteriously by their parents. They're not as lucky as the triggerfish who are very concerned parents, like the completely caring cuttlefish. Mum's the word for the turtles. She does everything, including carrying around her lazy husband. Luckily, the baby turtles stick together. It's a bit of a scramble, but it helps them survive. Unlike the grey nurse shark pups, who eat each other to ensure survival. Or what about the way out seahorse? Who's the daddy? Well, he is. Now that is family dedication for you. Seahorses are linked right back to clownfish by Daddy Daycare. Right, a bit more towards me. You sure I look OK? Oh, oh, yeah, you look great. Remember, it's the family. Your dad's going to love it. Smile. 